Good evening, guys. This is a video about studying multiple foreign languages and how you can switch between those different languages without getting confused and mixed up. Uh, if you've looked at my channel before, you've seen that I've studied a number of different foreign languages. Maybe you've studied a number of different foreign languages, and maybe you've found it kind of confusing, or maybe you've found there's some overlap between the language, or you've uh, crossed wires between language. Maybe it gets confusing when you study more than one. How do you keep them all inside your head and be able to speak more than a couple languages, like five, six, seven languages? How do you do it? Well, keep in mind I'm talking from the point of view of someone who's studied all these foreign languages as an adult. I didn't learn any uh, foreign language or second language as a kid. I, I was raised monolingual, just speaking English. So this is from that point of view of learning as an adult. Someone who learned it as a kid might be different. So keep that in mind. Um, okay, so basically there are three things. I'll start with the first one. I think you really need to refine your pronunciation for each of the languages. You really need to get specific with, your, uh, with the distinctions you make in the phonology. So really look at all the different sounds in each language and get them as, as uh, specific and as precise as possible. Because I think a lot of what causes crossover between different languages is that you are using the same phonology or similar phonology for those languages. When a native speaker has a very precise, distinct phonology for that language. So this is something, that my theory on this came from studying a few different languages. I studied Hebrew and Arabic, which are quite related, but the phonology isn't that similar. They're quite different. But also I've studied French, and I find that I've had a lot more crossover between French and Hebrew than between Arabic and Hebrew, even though French and Hebrew are not related, really. Uh, and that's because there are some similar phonological sounds between Hebrew and French that, are, that don't exist between Hebrew and Arabic. Uh, so that's caused some of the crossover between them. It's the phonology. It's the similar phonology. So in order to solve that problem, I had to really get precise with my phonology for French and for Hebrew. I had to look at all the sounds, look at um, exactly how to pronounce those sounds that were causing the confusion. So you can do that, I mean, when I say refine your pronunciation, it's in general focus on studying your pronunciation and improving it, get some help from native speakers, really focus on emulating native speakers. But also at a more advanced level, I'll teach you a little technique that, uh, that helps people take it to a more native level or near native level. The technique is this. Imagine that a particular native speaker is actually speaking through you. It might sound strange, but you're kind of channeling a certain person through your body and they're speaking out your mouth. Like when I speak French, I imagine that uh, Sarkozy, the former president, is speaking through me because he's somebody that I modeled when I was studying French. I paid attention to his pronunciation, tried to copy his intonation. Um, so when I speak French, uh, when I'm trying to get precise with my pronunciation, I imagine it's him speaking through me. All right, and when I speak Tagalog, I imagine a certain Filipino person who I know who speaks Tagalog. I imagine that person is speaking through me, and by doing that, you're you're really um, your your brain is picking up on a lot of very little subtle cues in the pronunciation that you can't pick up on consciously. If you try to focus on all those little differences, you can't really do it. But if you just focus on the whole person, you're unconscious mind can pick up on all those little fine-tuned um, elements of the pronunciation and help you out a lot. So that's one thing, it's one trick you can try uh, for getting your pronunciation to a more authentic level. Okay, so focus on the pronunciation, that's my first piece of advice. The second thing is 100% commitment, no half-stepping, 100% commitment when you are switching into the next language. Okay, so when you are Moving from one language into the other, it's kind of like you are walking through a doorway into another room. If you enter the doorway and you just stand in the doorway and try to speak the other language of the other room, you're going to retreat into the first room. You're going to go back into the other language or you're going to get some crossover between the two. You'll find it hard to really move into the second language. So what you really need to do is just make a firm decision. Okay, now I'm switching into the other language. I'm not going back into the old one, I'm 
walking through the doorway and I'm closing the door behind me, right? So you're, you're basically just completely deciding I'm speaking this language now and not the other. You don't want to switch back and forth, so you want to just lock the door behind you, okay? So it's really just about pushing yourself and making a firm commitment. And when you make that firm decision to speak this one, then it just motivates you and pushes you forward and takes you into that zone of that language. Okay, so that's the second thing. It's just that 100% decision. Okay, I'm going to speak French now. or I'm going to speak Arabic now and completely cut off the language you were speaking a moment earlier. All right, so that's number two. Number three is a little more abstract and it's one that I don't use all that often anymore, but I used it. I've tried it in the past and made use of it when I needed it. And it's like this. Uh, you imagine a scene that you associate with the language that you want to speak. So, for example, when I speak French, I might imagine a scene uh, on the patio of a cafe in Paris, right? And imagine all of the, the, subtle little, um, the subtle little sensory cues that go along with that, like um, the taste of wine and the smell of my, my baguette and all that kind of stuff. Um, and hearing the ambience around me, hearing the French language spoken around me. So by doing that, you are... You're creating a, a connection between the language and that image so that whenever you want to move into that, that state in which you, you are speaking the language well, then you imagine that image and it brings you into the zone of that language, okay? Uh, so that's something you can try. Um, another example of it, when I speak Hebrew, I imagine the time I spent in Jerusalem because that's a very vivid time for me. Uh, so I can bring myself back to that time, imagine the environment, imagine a certain situation I was in in that place where I can hear Hebrew speakers and I see uh, different uh, cultural things that remind me of the Hebrew language and all of that. So all of those things are associations that bring me back into the zone when I was speaking Hebrew well. All of these pieces of advice are kind of abstract. I wish I could be a bit more logical and scientific in the tips I'm giving, but when we're dealing with uh, when we're dealing with switching from one language to another, we're we're dealing with switching into different states, and that kind of requires you to take control of your perception, right? It's not um, the same for everybody. So if these tips don't really work for you, then you don't have to use them, of course, just, but think about similar types of techniques and how you can control your perception in a way that will take you into that zone where you are speaking the language well. So a lot of it has to do with associations and connections with that language. Another thing I should point out is that the languages that you haven't spoken recently are always going to fade a little bit if you leave them in the background, right? The ones that you can move into the most easily are the ones you have used most recently. So don't expect to use one of these techniques and be able to speak really well and really, uh, really instantly in a language you haven't spoken in five years. Uh, you might be able to uh, with the basics of that language, but you won't be at the level you were at five years ago, obviously, because you you start to lose some of the language gradually. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it's also a matter of just keeping the language fresh and keeping them uh, well practiced. You can't always do that with all of them. If you speak 10 languages, you can't speak all 10 every day. So you'll always have some that are more ready to go than others and the others are more waiting in the background for you to retrieve them and start to practice and, and um, brush up on those languages and then they'll be in the forefront and ready to get into the zone again. All right, so that's all I've got to say about that. Hope that's clear. Talk to you later.